Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays and Real Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Today is such a beautiful day. I hope all of you are doing amazing. I have a special guest today. My guest is none other than Michael D. Butler. Hello, Michael. Great to be with you, Lisa. I'm <laughs> hearing and seeing everything you're doing, such great things, and it's really an honor to be uh, with you on your show. Thank you. I'm Lisa Bubari, and this is the 3E event. Journey within and harness your inner power. September 30th, October 1st, at the Western Rancho Mirage Resort and Spa. Get your tickets today at the3eevent.com. Thank you. Well, for those of uh, you who are not familiar, Michael has got a bio this, this long, and I've already included the bio and everything, but I got to know Michael in many different aspects. Uh, find the speaker's edge. This was one of the books that you wrote. I have the of uh, 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 autographed book from you. Michael, if we want to talk about Michael D. Butler, how do we get to know you? A pastor, a publisher, a speaker, an author, please uh, showcase yourself for just a minute before I go into interviewing you. You know, now that I'm older, I'm I'm kicking on the door of 55, and I'm looking back on my life. I, I get more reflective, and I've got four sons and two beautiful grandsons, and I'm about to get married. And six mm. weeks from yesterday, I'll be tying the knot. Uh, my beautiful bride and I will be building a life together. And uh, you know, um, I think we're all tempted to look at the past or dream about the future, but the only place we can make a change is right here and now today. So one thing my parents taught me and I'm forever grateful was to live in the presence, live in the present and make a difference today. So I'm a, I'm a busy dad. I'm a busy poppy and uh, I'm a busy fiance. So I run a book publishing company. I love doing what I'm doing, you know, getting authors on stages globally. And we have authors in 30 countries. We've published 668 titles in the last six years and we're just getting started. We just launched Powerful Female Immigrants, 24 amazing stories, women from 19 different countries, 24 authors in this book. We launched in Dallas last week. And um, I just think it's great because, you know, the internet uh, changed the world. It made the world fly. And, you know, for a long time, evil regimes have tried to keep people bottled up and locked in. But, you know, as long as people can communicate, they realize that, you know, if somebody has a better life, then maybe I could do something different with my life. I don't have to be in the same box as everybody else. And I was that kid. I grew up on the farm in Oklahoma. I was creative. My parents didn't know what to do with me. I was a little rebellious, a little edgy, always getting sent to the principal's office. And so fortunately for me, I had some good, strong leadership in my life, but that's who Michael Butler is. I'm just a kid at heart, having fun and still uh, getting into a little bit of trouble, but also uh, hopefully causing some positive influence and impact as well. Yes, you are. And I am honored to be part of the book that you are publishing and be with the other 23 amazing human beings, beautiful, powerful immigrant, uh, female immigrants. Uh, what is the purpose of what you do? If we were to talk about, you know, everybody talks about find your purpose. Do you know your purpose? What is the purpose of what you do? So I really worked on this about 10 years ago, and, and my mentor, John Maxwell, said, come up with a four to seven word moniker. And uh, I came up with the word inspire greatness in others. And, and that's really my goal in life. That, that's what I love to do. I, um, I mean, what it looks like, it looks like getting people on stages and into books. But um, I find that people really shine once they have a breakthrough. And normally to have a breakthrough, you've got to go through some pain. You've got to go through some disappointments. You've got to go through some setbacks 
to find your greatness. And I had gone through a time in my life where I was uh, reevaluating, reassessing because I had gone through some, some, um, some tragedies in my own life. And uh, I, I dug down and found that my calling in life throughout my life, even from childhood, was really to inspire greatness in others. And uh, that's a process and it's been fun. And it, it's something that looks different now than it did 20 years ago. But we're learning every day how to do that. Which is amazing because I was going to ask you uh, what has been your breakthrough. But since you already mentioned a tad about that, what? how did you overcome that adversity in your life? Because we're all struggling in one way or another. Uh, just yesterday, I was hearing someone say, it's like, stop saying become better become healthier become this that means they are lacking they are not and they have to become but we all have trauma in our life we've had adversities in our life i don't think there is a human being that has not gone through some kind of a challenge in their life how did you overcome to be where you are yeah, that, that's a great question. I was in South Africa recently, pre-COVID, and we had a book launch there. And 2,000 women came out on a Saturday morning at 7.30 a.m. to launch a book in Afrikaans, oh, wow. which is a, uh, a very remote uh, dying language, actually, mainly just in South Africa. Half of South Africa speaks Afrikaans, and that's it. But these women were so excited, and they had overcome so much in their life. And I began to think about that very question you're talking about. And I think one thing that drives it home, because there's something I learned that day in South Africa, and that is they are famous for their diamond mines, right? Yeah. And all women love diamonds. That That's the saying, right? Chocolate and diamonds. And I, I recently uh, revisited diamonds because I was shopping for an engagement ring for my fiance. And I was reminded of that, that South Africans will move 200 tons of dirt to find one carat of diamond. You know, and, and I can remember, Lisa, as a kid that uh, I stuttered when I when I tried to speak. I was naturally outgoing. I was naturally a gregarious life of the party. I, I was imaginative. I had I, I was happy go lucky kid. And uh, but when I got into public school, I would just stutter when I got around strangers. And kids would make fun of me. And so what I did to cope, because I didn't like, you know, the embarrassment, the ridicule being made fun of, I went into my shell. And, mm -hmm. um, and so that was a very painful period of my life for about six years until I learned to overcome the stuttering. But the point is, it wasn't until I learned to let go of the pain that I could move forward. And I really had to get my eyes off of myself and I had to get my eyes on to other people. You know, I know what it's like to go through a divorce. I know what it's like to go through a bankruptcy. I know what it's like to go, uh, you know, have your children not return your phone calls or your text messages for months or years on end. That's that that's no fun. But instead of becoming angry, instead of becoming bitter, I try to embrace something good about that. And like the diamond mines in South Africa, I say, you know, I can't control what other people do. I can't control what other people say about me. Um, if I try to please other people, I'm never going to be happy. And I think, Lisa, the ultimate joy in life is finding your purpose and then operating that and functioning in that, even if other people don't approve. But that's your ultimate joy, letting go of the past, focusing on before you can focus on other people, you've got to focus on yourself. Get to know who you are, what you want, what you like, what you yes. dislike. A lot of people know the things they don't want, but when you ask them, how do you feel? What do you want? They stumble upon that. I can remember this kid. I, I got sent to the principal's office a lot as a kid, growing up on the farm okay. in Oklahoma. You did too? <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. We have that in common. His name, his, his name was Timmy. And uh, I got sent to the principal's office a lot. And this day, Timmy, Timmy, uh, was getting his punishment before me. So they were reading him his Miranda rights. <laughs> and um, and Timmy, Timmy um, did a little blame shifting that I wanted to pick up on. And, and I learned something that day that was not good. I picked up from Timmy that uh, blaming somebody else, and that's not the way to move forward in, in life. 
So for a long time, I blamed other people for my anger. I blamed other people for the the cards I was dealt in life. And, and when I realized that I was the common denominator to all of my problems and I had to look in the mirror, it wasn't my parents, it wasn't my ex-wife, it wasn't my kids, it wasn't, it wasn't my economic status. It was me that if, if I, I was a wrestler in high school and there was something on the wrestling room practice wall that was painted real big, blue and bold. And it said, if I am to be, it is up to me. And so wow, I, internalized I, love that. That. <laughs> I internalized that more than, you know, and it really changed my life with that attitude. I just wrote that down. If I am to be, it is up to me because it you think about to. it, as long as you have an entitlement mentality and you're waiting for somebody else to come save you, nobody's going to save you. Amen. Listen, nobody's going to come save you. The world's hurting right now. People are hurting right now. And, uh, you know, people all over the world, you and I have friends all over the world, and some of them have to tape, literally tape themselves up because they can't even get in to see a doctor. And literally they have to just push their way through the pain. But listen, the more dirt you move, when you have a purpose in your life, you might know it's tough right now, but you're going to do this for your kids and your grandkids. It's not always going to be this tough. And there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel, maybe not in your lifetime, but the difference, the decisions you make today can be positive for your grandkids and your children. Not only that, there's one thing, one more thing. And if you are successful, if you have a good life, stop uh, putting a damper on your life because somebody else is not catching up with you. And shine so you can light up their life and be a help or lift them up with you. That's always my philosophy. It's like you don't have to go down, help them come up. So yes, what are the three things that mm -hmm. when we think about it, first and foremost, I want to truly, uh, from the day we have met, you have been nothing but a, a gracious gentleman. And uh, we found, I found a bond with you, like I want to excel with you, go to stages with you and everything. And this is what Michael Butler is. What are the three things when someone says, I wish I could write a book, what do we need? What does somebody need to be in touch with you other than coming to the three E events, to meet you in person, to meet the rest of the ladies and everything? Well, definitely come to the event. I'm so excited about the event and women all over the country are talking about it and it, it's gonna be epic and exciting. I'm actually going to be talking about during my keynote, the four pillars of greatness that every great leader had that they got from somewhere. There's four characteristics that are, are unique uh, and, and they um, cross all borders, boundaries, language, and culture. And in the book, Finding the Speaker's Edge, I talk about one of the most powerful women in, <laughs> in California, other than Lisa, uh, in Los Angeles, California in the 1920s, her name was Amy, and she really impacted the world in a positive way. As a single mom, she had the first FM radio station in America, and she had 21,000 people coming to her church that she started wow. in Los Angeles uh, in 1920s. She had um, Ronald Reagan, Marilyn wow. Monroe, just some amazing celebrities coming to her church. She had Hollywood producers coming to her church to watch her sermons because she would hire producers from Hollywood to create the scenes and the sets. And, and she was so um, amazing and exciting and creative with her communication. But the number one thing that I found as I've studied leaders uh, for the last 40 years, as I've traveled around the world, the number one thing is they had a strong personal identity, is they got really rock solid on who they were and what they were called to do. So we're going to talk yeah. about identity. And in the business world, you can call it branding. You know, when somebody goes through a crisis like a bankruptcy or like a divorce or losing a child, that shakes you to the core. 
and you really go into survival mode where you're just trying to find your equilibrium again and finding your identity, your thumbprint, who you are, what is your DNA? And many times women and men in that situation realize they've been living the last 20 or 30 years of their life based on somebody else's expectations and not on who they're really created to be. And there's a lot of freedom that comes, Lisa, when we embrace who we're created to be. So I'm going to say, number one, it's identification. Number two, well, I'm not ready to give it away yet. It's a <laughs> So do you have a philosophy that you live by? Yeah, my, my philosophy is, is get up early, work hard. And, you know, I grew up on the farm in Oklahoma, and I think I got a lot of my values from my parents who were very hardworking, you know, uh, middle class people that worked hard. And I like to get my work done by noon and I like to play the rest of the day because there's a philosopher that says when your play is your work and your work is your play, you can't tell the difference between the two. That's a happy place to be. And I think if you're... It, you know, sometimes, I mean, let's face it, we all have to pay the bills. We have to work the J-O-B, right? But listen, why not work on your dream while you're working on your J-O-B? I've always spoken a lot to uh, direct salespeople, network marketers, entrepreneurs that were starting their companies. And listen, if you don't have two or three things going, I wonder, you know, life's got to be a little bit boring. I think the most exciting thing is to start your own business. You might say that's scary. Well, listen, you can mitigate risk by surrounding yourself with a great team of people. You can mitigate risk by doing something that you're passionate about, leveraging your time and your talents with a company that's already started, that's got a product that you don't have to ship, deliver, fulfill, and you could create a win-win. So there's lots of potential opportunities. So my guiding philosophy is get up early, work hard, have fun, surround yourself with fun, positive people. You know, life's too short to surround yourself with negative people. You can't choose which family you're born into, but you can choose which family you leave your inheritance and your legacy with. So you can it choose. It's true, but it's also scary to say, okay, you know, um, I'm I'm choosing this because a lot of, there there is a lot of risk in, taking that risk and yet when we think about it it's when you see yourself a year or six months later and you go oh my god and all this time i've been afraid to be where i am yeah 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 so, absolutely it's 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 really just getting started i mean you plan it you so plan i've got it. a question for you yeah. is mu young also an early riser with you well, well, she is. She is an early riser. And uh, I would say, I would imagine in the future that we'll probably find our equilibrium. <laughs> uh, so who was your greatest mentor other than family? Other than family, um, I, I would say my pastors over the years. So my first career, I was an ordained minister. And so I was... I was working in the church and became ordained when I was 17, even as wow. I was going to Bible college. And I'm right now publishing a book about the subject of grace for one of my first pastors named Ron Isom. So he was a great mentor to me and a great friend. He was about 10 years older than me. So he was he was young at the time. He was in his early 30s, late 20s. He seemed like he was 40 or 50, but you know he wasn't much older than me. So I've just had some great people. Uh, Jack Hayford was a great uh, mentor, and he was a pastor in California that many people know. And uh, I've had mentors like T.D. Jakes is a great communicator, and he's been a mentor from afar. I've loved watching him speak and develop his speaking ability over the years. I talk about him in the book. And um, I would say a lot of my mentors have been people that I haven't met, but uh, people like Grant Cardone have been great inspirations to me. I look at people that are successful, that have got great work ethics and that treat people right. Um, so I, I've had lots of men and women over the years that I've looked up to or that I've learned things from. Here's what I've learned, Lisa, is I've learned to, um, as one of my mentors said, 
growing up on the farm in Oklahoma, eat the hay and leave the sticks. Old cows on the farm know you eat the hay and leave the sticks. Your mentor might do stuff that that perturbs you or is not right. Learn the good and forget the rest. Just emulate what you learn that's the best. It's funny because I have a saying, I, uh, my write-up, one of my quotes is, keep the best, dump the rest. Absolutely. It's like moving that dirt and finding the diamond. You know, you you get dirty when you when you do the work and roll up the sleeves. Most of the successful entrepreneurs that become billionaires are those that aren't afraid to roll up their sleeves and go to go to work. Beautiful. Michael, what is the difference between becoming a bestseller on Amazon or bestseller on New York Times? I know there is a formula to getting there, but right now does how does it uh, differentiate yeah that's a great question you know what uh, a lot of people thought the internet killed publishing but readership is up globally people are reading now more than ever so writing a book really creates credibility and so there's about 33 bestseller lists on the nonfiction side and there's dozens of awards and bestseller lists on the fiction side um, the ultimate would be the, the New York Times bestseller. That's the mm -hmm. most recognized. To be number one on the New York Times bestseller list, you need to sell about 20,000 books in one week's time. Wow. And, okay. and that's certainly doable. Um, Amazon would be the entry point. Amazon, somebody can be a, a bestseller on Amazon in a category, but it's not the same as being a national bestseller overall on Amazon. We've had our authors before go number one in in fiction or in nonfiction overall uh which is very difficult to do because for that day you're competing with tens of thousands of books that may have launched that week and so it's very hard it's very competitive but when it comes right down to it if your book is moving and people are reading it that's a win-win so the big thing for an author is you're creating credibility but also you're getting people to buy your book and you're also helping the algorithms on these platforms uh, share your book with other people. So the cool thing about going number one and getting Amazon reviews, in fact, if you Google my name, Michael D. Butler, Amazon reviews or bestseller on YouTube, you're going to get hundreds of videos, how to videos on how to go bestseller on Amazon, you know, how to get a New York Times bestseller, how to get a celebrity endorsement. And so I talk about all these things on YouTube. So it's a great question. But I say get started with where you're at. You want to walk before you can run and, you know, be a part of somebody else's book first before you launch your own, because you might not have enough words to put into a 200 page book. Uh, but you can start with a co-authored book like with Lisa. I think you're doing some books and, you know, jump in with her because you're going to leverage the marketing that she's doing. And you create a win-win. And then once everybody starts to know you, you kind of build up your, your database of friends and followers. And then when you launch a book, particularly if you got your own show like, like you do, Lisa, then it, it just makes sense. Yes, I would love to interview every single one of the ladies. Plus, one more thing. The key to success is just do it. I'm going to say diligence. Never give up. Never give up. You know, Dr. Greg Reed's got a book called in Sharon Lecter, Three Feet from Gold. How many people yes. give up three feet before they hit gold? And uh, the book of Proverbs, King Solomon said, the hand of the diligent makes rich. And normally the one that, that ends up at the top is not the better client, the better musician, the better writer. It's the one that just kept swinging the bat just kept going to work, just kept knocking the door, just kept picking up the phone, just kept hugging people and following up with your customers and being sure they're happy. What can I do today to be diligent and make sure my people are happy? Because you know what? If you're diligent, you're going to win and you're going to end up on top every time. It may not happen overnight, but you will get there. Well, I, I believe I'm tenacious enough to follow exactly what you said uh michael thank you very much for your time i know you are back to back even uh coming on the show today and being uh present means a lot i thank you uh and i respect what you do and love how you are treating every single person with such gentleness and yet strength 
and that takes a lot and you I, actually you're one of the best publishers that I have come across and know and you know we're going to explore more possibilities look forward to seeing you at the 3e event and every Thanks one of you work. ladies Join I, I just want to say I'm so excited to be speaking at the Engage Empower Elevate because you know of all the events I'll be doing this year around it's the, the world, tree. It's the Evoke Embrace Evolve, and yes, 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 <laughs> yes. yes I, I'm I'm so excited to be a part of your and event. And then you're gonna fly out the next day to get married. What be, what better way, right? I mean, it's it's perfect. You guys are getting me ready. Yeah, I'm going to be all ready to go. <laughs> By the way, uh, is your fiance going to be with you at the event, or she's going to be home getting ready? Yeah, um, I'll have to get back to you on that. She's certainly invited, <laughs> so I, I think that would be epic if she could come with me. Yes, it would be epic because I have a surprise. For, ooh, I just gave it away, but it will be amazing. Uh, and last thing, would you please finish this sentence? Michael is not done. Michael is not done. And you're not done either. Listen, you might feel like it's over, but listen, get back up. The world needs you. You might be bleeding now, but somebody is hurting a lot worse. And the best way to heal your pain is to heal somebody else's pain. But listen, take care of yourself so you can get back up. I am getting back up. Amen to That's that. Crazy. And until next week, I wish you all the best. God bless you. And may the universal light surround you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, Michael. Thank you, Lisa. I'm Lisa Bubari, and this is the 3E event. Journey with it and harness your inner power. September 30th, October 1st, at the Western Rancho Mirage Resort and Spa. Get your tickets today at the 3 eeventcom Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. And if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.